Today on Papal's Projects, we are going to mix a Blender Basics episode with a Practical Prince, and we are going to, going to design a drill bit holder for a set of Forstner drill bits for woodworking that I picked up over the weekend. So stick around. Alrighty, so today, like I said, we are going to uh, mix a couple different things. We are going to do a Blender Basics and we are going to design a uh, drill bit holder for these drill bits that I purchased over the weekend. And then we are going to also include it as a practical print because it's practical and I needed one. So. I'm going to put it in both playlists. So we have Blender Basics. It's also going to be a practical print. And the episode is Let's Make a Drill Bit Holder. Okay. So to get started, the first thing I need to do is share my screen with you guys. And we are going to go into Blender 2.8. Now, this is the new beta version. I'm going to continue working in the new version instead of continuing on with 2.79. No need to learn 2.79 only to have to relearn it as 2.8 because they have changed the interface quite a bit and things are not in the same locations as they once were. This should be a pretty short little video. This is a pretty easy project. So, uh, Hopefully it'll go well, and at the end, I will stop the video and print the item and then add the clip in after the item is printed. So let's get started. First thing I want to do, I've got Blender 2.8 open, I'm in orthographic view, I'm in top view, I do not have the camera or light on the screen in my viewport. And I'm going to open up a shortcut viewer so that you guys can see that anytime I type a command, it should pop up down in the lower left hand corner here. And it might help some of you out. And then I'm going to open the view window over on the right. Okay. So I think we're ready to start. I've got a pretty good idea. I've measured the shanks of my drill bits so that I know what size holes I want. I have seven drill bits and I've estimated that on how long of a holder I want to build so everything should go pretty smooth. We are going to start out here in modeling mode. Like I said, orthographic mode is what I like to work in and starting from the top I'm going to add a mesh cube and there's our cube okay once we have the cube in there then we're going to just put in some of our measurements over here in the dimensions section I know I want it to be 175 millimeters wide and let me zoom out so we can see it at that scale okay and I know I want it to be 50 millimeters deep so now we're getting closer and I want it to be 40 millimeters high whoops not 400 40 millimeters high okay so that gives us our our base this is what we're gonna build from all right so the next thing I want to do is take this let me go to the front view which is number one on the number pad and we have our front view and let's edit this thing so we're gonna go into edit mode by selecting the box the cube and hitting tab now you'll see up here in the upper left that we have now entered edit mode and 
want to subdivide or loop cut this front face. If I can get it, there we go, that's what I want. So now we actually have two pieces. It's still the same cube, but we added we added a uh, another edge in the center that we can work with. All right, now I'm going to go to the move tool and I'm going to hold the alt key down and select this edge. I need to go up here in the upper left, you'll see vertices select, edge select, face select. We're going to select the vertices, or I'm sorry, the edge. And I'm going to hold the Alt key down, and hopefully, if it does what it's supposed to do, when I click it, it will select this edge all the way around the entire box. And it does not look like it did. But let's try it anyway. Yes, it did. Okay. So, now I'm going to watch the... Going to watch the Z up there in the transform box in the upper right. This was 40 tall, so zeros would be the middle, 20 millimeters. And I actually want it to be down around 15 millimeters, so I gotta go negative. Well, that's in meters, so it's probably gonna be negative. 0.5 Is that right? 15 No, that doesn't look right So let's just say negative 5 mm There we go And X really should be at zero, I believe. No, I don't want to do that. It shifted. Control Z. Okay, so maybe we'll just eyeball this. Let's see. Maybe I can... Let's do it this way. Here we go. I'll go to front view, and we made it 40 tall. And I see part of the problem. We are out of center here. So I'm going to select this. I'm going to select this model. Let me go back to object mode and reset things. And I'm going to do that by going Shift S. And I am going to um, cursor to world origin. Should put us back in the middle. And then I'm going to Shift S and take the selection to cursor. Whoops, I picked the wrong one. Selection to cursor, keep offset. I want selection to cursor, just plain selection to cursor. There we go. Now we should be centered again. Okay, now let me go back to edit mode. You can do it by the drop down or you can do it with the uh, tab key. Okay, so each one of these boxes should be five. Millimeters. No, 10 millimeters. 10, 20, 30, 40. We made it 40 tall. So I wanted it 15 off the bottom. We're gonna put it about the middle there. And this doesn't have to be exact. It's not rocket science. I just kind of have a look that I want to go for. Okay, so we're going to put that loop cut right there, and that's approximately 15, 10, and about midways of this grid block here. <clears throat> now we're going to look at it from the end. Oh, okay, I see the problem. I see another problem. When I selected it, I did not select all the way around. I thought it did, but it did not. We are going to control Z back. We are in edit mode. Let's go back to the front view. And let's edge select. Let's just select all of them. 
select this edge and I'm going to rotate the model, hold the shift key down, select this edge, rotate the model, hold the shift key down. I don't know why the alt key did not work. Maybe because I'm not in wireframe. Not certain. But that's okay. It's a small model. So it's easy enough just to rotate around and get them all. Now we're going to go back to the front view. One. And we're going to move it down to about 15 millimeters off the bottom. Now let's see if it went equally all the way around. Yes, there we're looking good. Okay, that's what I wanted. Okay. So now, let's go to the end view. And we're nice and straight. And let's go back to the front view. Let's tilt it down a little bit so we can see. And let's select this front edge. Go back to the end view. And let's take this back about 10. Let's go ahead and bring it on back. That looks pretty good. So that's going to leave us 5, 15, 25, 30, so approximately 30 millimeters there. That looks pretty good. So let's go back to the front view. Let's kind of tilt it down a little bit. And that's kind of what I was going for. Okay, so now let's go to the top view, seven on the number pad. Okay, now we need to cut seven holes in the top for the drill bits to slide into. So I think we will take and go back to object mode. And we will add a mesh cylinder and we will make that cylinder 11 millimeters which is just slightly bigger than the shank on the drill bit and let's make it 25 millimeters a little room over here and open up the scene collection and we see that we have the cube let's go ahead and rename that drill bit holder and then the cylinder is just a tool that we're going to use so let's select the cylinder and we are at the 20 millimeter mark here should be no 25 millimeters because we made this 50 we should be right in the center so let's take this we want to be in the center of this 30 we want to be right here about where this grid line is and we are actually where this grid line is so let's move the location of this in the Y direction. See here Y. We want to go that way, which is Y. And we're going to change it positive. You see here, this is Y positive. This is Y negative. This is X positive. This is X negative. Now, if I was to go to the rear view, you'll see those change. Now, this is X positive and X negative, and this is actually it rotated because we're not in top view anymore. Um, Z positive is up, Z negative is down, but if I go to the, if I go to, let's say the bottom view, 
Now we're looking at it from the bottom. And now Y positive is this direction. So wherever you see these three letters, that's the positive direction. And wherever you don't see the letters is the negative. So positive X, negative X, positive Y, negative Y, and positive Z, negative Z. Okay, so we want to go back to the top view. We have our cylinder, we have it selected. We can tell it's inside this model right now. We can tell it's here. So we want to move it Y positive 10 millimeters. Well, it'll help if I hit the uh, move button. And now tell it Y positive 10 millimeters. does not appear to be moving. Okay, so let's try this. Let's go zero. Start there. And let's just move it manually. See what we get. There we go. Didn't mean to drag that, that was an accident. So let's go back, zero there, make this 10, okay. So that gets our alignment where we want, and we are going to want to take it this way, and it's 175 long, and I want to be about 20 off the end. So we're going to take half of 175 is 50, 85, 87 and a half. 87 and a half should be the edge. Pretty close. And we're going to come off of that 20. We're going to go positive 57 and a half. 67 and a half. 67.5 okay and we'll go to the front view we need to bring it up to the top this is 25 millimeters of cylinder so to get this up to the top we've got to come up and we are 20 millimeters from here to here So if we raise the Z, twelve and a half, seven and a half. So let's go seven point five one. There we go. I just barely wanted to pop out the top, and that's what it did. Okay. That way I don't end up with a thin skin face right across this hole. I want to make sure I can make it exactly flush with the top but sometimes that will leave a little skin over top of the hole and kind of drive you crazy trying to clean it up. So I just always add 0.1 when I'm trying to pierce the surface. Okay so we've got our cylinder in here and our cylinder should be centered and it is. 20 millimeters from the end and it is and breaking the surface so there's our hole that's what we're going to want so the next thing we need to do is we need to select the wrench so we can get to our modifiers and Check one thing. Yes. Make sure my microphone was turned on. I have a habit of leaving the microphone muted. Okay, so we're going to select the block, add a modifier, Boolean, difference, and we are going to subtract the cylinder from it and apply. 
Okay. Now, that should have cut a hole in the block. We will find out in just a second because we are going to now take that same cylinder and drill six more holes. So the next hole is going to be another 25 to the left. So X negative 25. 25 from this is going to be 42.5. 42.5. That looks about right. And let me roll, roll this so you can see the hole there. Okay, so 42.5, that put us in the location that I was looking for. It's about 25 millimeters to the left of the other hole. That should give space for the cutting head. And we are going to subtract this hole. So we're going to go back and we're going to select the block, which I just did. And modifier, boolean, difference, subtract the difference of the cylinder and apply. And there we have the hole for the second drill bit. Alright, we need to do that two more times. The first, the biggest four drill bits have the same size shank. So, let's take the cylinder and we need to relocate it to the left. Uh, let's see, 45. We need to take it another 25 to the left. Let's say let's see here. Forty-five. Forty-two and a half. So twenty-two and a half. Twenty. Seventeen and a half. Sound right? Seventeen point five. Looks about right. They look evenly spaced. Okay. I'm good with that. Let's give it a try. And we're going to select the drill bit holder. You always want to select the item you want to subtract from and then select the item that you're going to use as an example of what you want to delete. So if I said that right, we're going to select the drill bit holder. We are going to do a Boolean modifier. We are going to select difference. Difference is subtract versus union. You would join. You would add the two pieces together and make one object. So we are going to say difference and we're going to subtract the cylinder and apply. And that should have given us our third hole. Okay, now let's go back to the cylinder and relocate it. Right now we are 17 and a half, positive X. And the next one needs to be another 25. So 17 and a half will take us back to the zero. Let's see, 17 and a half, 25. 17 and a half. So what do we need? Seven and a half negative. So we're gonna go back to the zero and beyond by seven and a half. So negative 7.5. Should get us there. It looks pretty good. Alright, let's drill this hole. Select the block, Boolean modifier, difference. Going to remove the cylinder and apply. Okay, so there's the four big bits that have the same size shank. Now we got to start changing up a little bit. Okay, so let's go back and we will pick the cylinder. And let me look at my notes here. 95. Looks like we're going to go another. 20 millimeters left, so that's going to be negative 27.5. And now we need to change the diameter. 
this drill bit shank is not 11 millimeters we're gonna need to go 8 millimeters is what I have figured will leave me a little bit of clearance so it's not a press fit so we're gonna set that to 8 millimeters in the dimensions and 8 millimeters And that should have reduced the diameter and it did we're gonna leave it at 25 millimeters deep though so now we go back to our normal routine let's go back and select the drill bit holder modifier boolean difference subtract the cylinder and apply Next one that puts us at 115. So now we need to go another 20 to the left. So we're going to go negative 47.5. And let's see, that gives us this is hole number six. We're on track. Okay, and again, we need to make this just a little bit smaller. So we're going to go to the dimensions and we are going to set it at 7.5 by 7.5. That gets our diameter where we need it. Okay. Now we're going to do it again. Drill bit holder, Boolean modifier, difference, cylinder, and apply. I like this project uh, this is a good project that you can do and it gives you plenty of practice using uh, the boolean modifier and the best way to learn and be able to remember this stuff is through repetition so here we are drilling seven holes by the time you get done making this drill bit holder or you could even use it for allen wrenches or you could use it for um, driver bits for an impact driver or electric screwdriver or anything like that and you can make as many holes as you want you can make the block any size you want so not everybody has something like that around the house they could use storage for alright so did we drill that hole I do not recall I'm going to double check I'm going to select the cylinder and I'm going to turn off the eyeball Yes, we did drill it. Turn on the eyeball again. And now we need to go from 135 to 155. So that's another 20 to the left. That's easy enough. So we're going to relocate it. Negative 67.5. And this is our last hole. And it's a smaller bit. So we have to change the diameter again. This one needs to be five millimeters. A five millimeters. Okay. Let's go ahead and clear this hole. Select the block, Boolean modifier, difference, remove the cylinder, and apply. That should give us all of our holes for the drill bits. So we should be done with this. I'm going to turn off the eyeball real quick and make sure the hole is there because every once in a while it does not make the cut. But it did. So once I've confirmed that, now I'm just going to right click and hit delete. We're done with that. And there's all our holes. So at this point, I could print it and it would be functional. But you know what? We got an opportunity here, so I might as well do a little playing with it. And let's see. What do I want to do? Let's give it a color here, real quick. Pick this. There's the color right there. And let's give it a new color. And we're going to make the color a yellow because I love. There we go, I like that yellow. 
Okay, so we're going to go back now. And we're going to change over to color view. This is wireframe, solid view, solid view with materials, and this is full rendered view. So there is my block. Even though I am going to print this out of white, I'm running low on yellow right now. Okay, so now let's do a little fancy work. I'm going to take going to create the text and our text has been created but we can't see it so let me go to top view and let's drag the text out here where we can see it and it is very tiny so I'm going to hit the S key and scale it up now it's highlighted so we have it selected I'm gonna hit the tab and take out the sample text and put in my logo PA Papaws projects I like that okay and now we're gonna hit the tab and it's back to a text all right so let's take it and bring it over here roughly and let's bring it down a little bit and we're going to scale it up again. We're going to scale with the S, I'm going to bring it over about there, that's close and let's move it away from our model just a little bit. Okay now I'm going to go to the end view, 3 on the number pad, and you can see that the model is three dimensional. You can also see that over here with these arrows, these drag arrows, um, the text is not 3D. So let's go back to top view, and we have the text selected. We have to actually convert the text into a mesh, 3D model mesh. Okay, so what we're going to do next, um, this is Blender 2.8 and 2.79, all you have to do is hit uh, Alt C and the option will pop up. But 2.8, that does not seem to work. I'm going to hit the space bar to get the search and I'm going to say convert to mesh. Convert to go ahead and click that. Convert to mesh from a curve, meta, surf, or text. And we're going to convert mesh text to mesh. So that's the one we want. Okay. So now when I go to the text, I open up the collection, you'll see we now have a mesh. Okay. So let's go back to in view and let's go into edit mode with the tab and let's select the text and I'm going to hit E for extrude and I'm just going to hit the down arrow key it is not going down so let me try to drag it no, I'm missing something. Something I am not seeing. So, let's go. We're in object mode. We did not go to edit mode. That was the problem. Okay, so now we're in edit mode. And A selects all. Three so I can see it from the end. Now I'm going to hit the E and the down arrow key. I could have drug it with the mouse, but I like the down arrows. I can keep everything straight. And we extruded it. 
into a 3D object and hit enter. And there is our three dimensional text. Okay. So, the next thing I want to do is I want to, we're on the move tool. Actually, we can probably go back to object mode now and drag it. Drag it. Somewhere around there. Kind of roughing it in. Okay. Now let's go to the front view. There's our text. You can't hardly see it because it's in the model right now, but let's go to the top view. There you can kind of see it. Let's go back to the end view, and we are going to rotate this item on the X axis. So I hit R, X. Now I can rotate it. And let's go there for now and zoom in so we can get this a little better. And we will reposition it. Boy, that's looking pretty good. I like it. I think we're going to go with that. Alright, I don't want it higher than the top here, which we're not. And I don't want it out from the face here, which it is slightly. But we need to make them touch anyway. We're going to drag this back just a little bit so that they're touching. And now we get to go have fun with Boolean operators again. This time we're going to do it different. We are going to select the block just like before. Let me go ahead and collapse that. Select the block, add a modifier, Boolean. And this time we want to use the union option. And we want to join the block to the text. Say apply. Now, what it did was it joined a copy of that text to the block. Okay? You'll see here that if I take the text and select it, and then I move it out of the way, there is some text on the model and also a copy that is still the text. And I can make multiple copies of that. I can paste it on the top and on the back and on the bottom, whatever I want to do. But for this project, that's all we're going to do is just the one, just to personalize it. So we're going to take this text and we are going to delete it. We're done with it. Okay. I do believe that's what I wanted. So, now let's, let's see here, let's take and save it, drill bit holder, and we give it a number, I don't want to do any other, and save blender. Now we're going to export it. Export as an STL file, build bit holder 2, and it's in the, my Blender 2.8 files. Export. Okay, so that should have it. Now, let me go ahead and shrink this and go back. Let's pull up Cura. And actually, while that's coming up, I need to grab my little SD card. So we can transfer it over to the machine. So let me put that in there. And now we're in the slicing software. Let's open the file. And let's go to Blender 
2.8 and drill bit holder 2 and there it is it's a five and a half hour print okay we're gonna save that to the removable drive check the drive and we are good to go so let me switch back here to the main screen all right so now what I'm gonna do is I am going to stop the video I'm gonna print the drill bit holder get it ready and then I will come back and append the uh, rest of the video together so that you can see the end result so stick around I will be right back okay prints done you can see it over there on the left I've got it setting up on the printer I did take a little bit of uh, paint and paint the lettering so that it stands out got all the drill bits in it here let me uh, turn off this be right back there we go and let me go ahead and bring you over to the printer cam you can get a good look at it and there we go turned out pretty well all the drill bits fit in there perfect that little bitty one is just a little bit loose but it's totally fine so now I can keep my entire set of Forstner bits in their proper place so I'm very happy with that let me uh, come back here so that's a nice little practical print project it's also a good blender basics project that way you get a little more familiar with using boolean operators and I really hope you enjoy it and I'm sure if you look around you will find that you have several things around the house that would uh, really work out well with a holder of this style so just look around and see what you got do some playing dig into blender 2.8 and now that I've done this I do want to ask before I go I would certainly appreciate it if you like what you saw and you want to see more of it uh, please hit the subscribe button and uh, if you want to get notifications anytime I upload new content just ring that bell and then YouTube will hopefully notify you whenever I go live or put up another video also feel free to check me out on other social media and uh, contact me if I'm not online you can get a hold of me through Facebook, through Twitter, through Twitch. So check out some of my other stuff, and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you, and have a wonderful evening and a very Merry Christmas.